Hello! In this video, we're going to take a look at a very important concept as it relates to SharePoint lists and Power Automate workflow. Specifically, we're going to look at how you can listen for a specific field changing in your SharePoint list. It's very common that we have workflows that are responding to any time an item is updated in SharePoint. But that doesn't really factor in situations where we are listening just for a specific change. For our example, we're going to look at when somebody needs to do a approval request. Or you might, for example, want to trigger an email when status changes to complete. And so uh, we want to be able to do this by modifying the Power Automate workflow to check for some specific conditions so we can isolate just for that field change specifically. So let's go ahead and jump in. Here I am back in SharePoint Online, and to begin this exercise, what we're going to do is create a very simple list, uh, which is just going to be uh, enough to demonstrate the concept that we're after. So you can follow along and do the same steps that I'm going to show in this video. So I'm going to make a new list, and I'm going to make this be called Approval Requests. And that's it, I'll show it my site navigation. Sure, that's fine for now. And then what I'm gonna do is just add one column. And I'm gonna make it a yes, no column, and then hit next. And we'll just call this request approval. And that'll be a yes, no, defaulting to no. That is all that I'm gonna need for the SharePoint list. The idea here is we're going to have uh, some names of projects, say Apple's project, Bananas project, Cherry's project. Okay, so I have a few records to exit grid view. And <clears throat> we're gonna have this request approval, which is a checkbox. And when this is, gets checked, I want to kick off my workflow, but only when that specific field changes, um, not when anything else in the record might change. Now in SharePoint, there's an important concept that you want to understand that relates to what we're going to do, and that has to do with versioning. And by default, in SharePoint, you're going to have item versioning. It's keeping track of changes. Every single time that record gets updated, that is a version. And by default, that's set to 50 versions with SharePoint Online. So you will not have to make any changes to this, but you might go ahead and examine this in the list settings as I'm showing here. So we can leave that exactly as is, just something to be aware of in the context of what I'm getting ready to show. So that's all that we need to do in SharePoint. Now we're ready to look at the Power Automate aspect of this. So we're gonna go ahead and create a new flow and I'll just click New Flow. This will be an automated cloud flow. And I'm gonna call this Send Chat Message When Approval Request. Okay, and then what we're interested in is when the item is modified. Okay, so when an item or file is modified, that's the type of flow that we're going to do. Flip that open up, and then we need to browse to the list that we just created. So I'm going to go to my site here, and I'm going to find my new list, which is approval requests. And then we're going to, I always like to expand the options just to make sure I see everything. And we're going to start with the first key concept as it relates to detecting for when a specific field changed. Normally when we do this modify event, we don't add any conditions, but you have the ability through the settings to add trigger conditions on this field. And what that does is tell us 
additional parameters that control whether or not this is going to flow. So in, instead of always running, which is the default condition, we can um, put conditions on that. So what I'm going to do is add in a special trigger condition here to get what I want. Um, so <clears throat> we need to have some special syntax. I'm going to put this in the footer under the video. This is the one part where you're going to put in a little bit of a snippet of code, but generally it's pretty eager, easy to understand. Um, so you can copy and paste from the snippet. So um, what I need here is at sign equals, and then you need to type in trigger body, just as you see me showing um, right here, and then question mark, and then in square brackets, and then uh, two single quotes, I need the name of the field. So uh, this goes back to SharePoint. I call my field request approval with no spaces. You could call your field what you want. It does need to reference the internal name in SharePoint. So you'll notice I didn't put a space in my field name. That was just to make things easier. So I have to put in extra code. So I'm going to reference that as request approval. And then I can put a comma. And then it needs to know what uh, value I'm looking for. So I'm interested in this when it's true. And I literally just type true here. And then I can close that. And that's what I need for my trigger condition. and I will click done. I do want to reference something. This is also linked in the video. There's an excellent guide on trigger conditions in SharePoint in spguides.com. This is a site maintained by a friend of mine, BJ, who is excellent in all kinds of SharePoint examples on the web. He runs a couple of different sites, enjoysharepoint.com and spguides.com. I'll put a link to this particular page. He has really excellent information about how to set these up. So let's go back over here. So the next thing we're going to do, which is special to our circumstance, is we need to get um, the changes. We, there's a particular option that we have where I can do get changes for an item. Okay, get changes for an item or a file. Properties only, we want to select that. And then once again, we need to browse to that same site and list. So my list was called approval request, there it is. Then we just simply pass along the ID. Uh, I don't have any other options to choose from, so that one's simple. And then there's a couple of special arguments you put in here. We only care about comparing against the last version of the file preceding this one. Um, this is a bit difficult to explain, but I will tell you, you just need to type the word trigger. And when you do, there's two special options that are available to you, which you want to take advantage of. So you got trigger window start token, trigger window end token. Um, for since, you want to use trigger window start token, and then until trigger window end token. All you have to remember is type in the word trigger under the dynamic content. It's going to find it for you. Um, just make sure to do that each time. Okay, now this flow is aware of previous version information on this record. So the next thing I'm going to do is a regular condition block. And we're going to check. What we want to know is whether this field uh, request approval is changed to yes. So we already filtered the flow, so it's only going to run when the value is yes. Now we're going to ensure that it actually was a change. In other words, in this case, it would have had to be no uh, as a preceding value for the record. So we have some special properties now available to us. It says, has column changed? These are available to us specifically as a result of the preceding flow block get changes for an item. It gives us this e additional properties. So here's the has column changed request approval. That's going to return a Boolean result. So it will either be true or false. And I want to make sure that I 
do my next part of the flow only in the case that it um, changed. It changed. So I simply will go to the expression. I'm going to type the word true and that will call up this block and you'll see that in there. And now I will only execute um, the rest of my flow in the case that this field changed. Not only that it's true, but that it was changed from unchecked to checked, false to true. Okay, and just to demonstrate the rest of this, we're gonna add in fun one, which is the um, flow bot messages, which I featured in another video, which you can find on my channel preceding this video. So I'm gonna use the option post message in chat. That's a special Microsoft Teams option. And we're gonna let Flowbot send a message. So we're gonna say um, chat with Flowbot. And this is going to go to me. There I am. And I'll make my message super simple. Um, approval request for and then let's just go ahead and put in the title of the record so there it is that's it it's gonna ping me with the message there's one additional step I'm gonna do here now you don't necessarily need this step in my case I want that checkbox to reset I want it to go back to its original state so that it's set up to trigger again I don't want it to stay checked now if you were doing this and you were doing something like checking for when a value changed like a status to complete, you don't need to reset that. You can catch just when it changes to complete. It won't fire again. In my case, I want to reset my field. So this is an optional part of it. So um, in my case, what I want to do is update this item. And the item I want to update, of course, is um, from the same site. So a lot of repetition in Power Automate. Sometimes I just need to select the same things again. So I'm going to pick my same list again. Um, it's um, approval requests. The ID, of course, that's the ID of when an item is modified, um, coming from the very top of the flow. And then titles required. So I need to just pass along the title value that we already have. So um, I just find title again, and then uh, request approval. I'm resetting that back to no. Okay, so that's correct. Let me save that. Let me double check. I have another um, flow that I created previous. So I'm gonna make sure my syntax precisely correct, just to uh, make sure that we're Good. So I did this on this one. Let me go to the settings. That looks to match to me. So I'll go ahead and stick with this. Let's go back to SharePoint and let's fire it up. Okay. I can even just use the grid view. So it's just this simple. I check the box, exit grid view. Now, SharePoint record has gone to true. And now I can go back to my home page for this flow and I can wait for it to execute. I tend to think of this like waiting for the bus. Um, we don't know precisely when it's going to respond, but at some point this request is going to be picked up. Um, so we can just sit patiently on our page. Um, the delay varies a little bit. Um, it can be, you know, anywhere between, you know, 30 seconds, a minute, but we can kind of just sit on this page and refresh and eventually we'll see it um, pick up the request. So a key part of this that's important is we're being as efficient as we possibly can by using that condition on the original trigger, ensuring that this flow is not going to use up unnecessary runs. It's not just going to execute every single time that SharePoint list record is updated. It's only going to run this flow specifically when that field has the value that we set. That's a really key part of this. So um, make sure you include that condition. And then, of course, the other key part of it is um, the change to the property. So um, that's a really... 
um, key thing to consider. Okay, so there's my flow running. Bing, there's my Power Automate message. Um, so I just got a message in Power Automate. Um, I'll move that over and there it is. Approval request for Apple's project, very nice. All right, let's get this out of the way. And what you're also gonna notice is if I go back to SharePoint and refresh the page, my checkbox just disappeared. So it reset me back to the original state and that's exactly what we wanted. Um, so this is an important concept because you can use this to trigger any kind of a flow. So everything you see past that if condition on the flow, um, it could be anything. So instead of having to do, uh, say for a selected item trigger, Power Automate, or if you wanna trigger this under other circumstances, now we're able to precisely trigger the flow based on the specific case that one of the fields in our SharePoint list changes. Um, so you're being as efficient as you possibly can. That's all I wanted to show you. Of course, that was a silly use case. We only had two fields in the list, but that was by design. I wanted to make sure that you can get out of the blocks by just following the exact example that I gave. Um, again, I want to emphasize the link under the video is very useful to BJ's site on um, you know, all those various different examples of trigger conditions. In our case, we were checking for a true-false field and more often, more often the case, you're checking for a text value or you may have a numeric value. So you use different uh, code snippets for those trigger conditions, but that's really a very key part of it. Um, so if you've ever wondered about that, how do I check for the case where a specific field was updated to a, a value that you're looking for? This is the best and most efficient way that you can go about doing that um, with Power Automate. So it's very important for you to be comfortable with the approach that I demonstrated because this is something you can repeat and use over and over again and be efficient and specific in targeting those changes um, and not just doing it every time the list item is updated and simply doing an if condition to check. Um, so I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you found that useful and you're able to take advantage and make your SharePoint list related Power Automate flows work um, more efficiently and uh, you can catch those changes or use a trigger like we had in this case. Let your user have a checkbox where they can trigger a flow directly from your SharePoint list form um, just by selecting a particular field. And good luck.